After a gap like this, it doesn't feel right to start the video with frying of shrimp who's way bigger than me and on his way out anyway. However, much like with this rather successful prediction, I still have unused home-baked memes and I might as well use them. Funny how this video with the shrimp on the thumbnail has been called out for not performing well. It didn't do well. I'll rub it into your face, Andrew. Meanwhile, this video without the shrimp on the thumbnail did even worse, so... What's the conclusion? Another thing this aquatic creature has claimed is that whatever he has left behind has an escape velocity. The problem is, I'm not aquatic, not purple, and don't have a churn of fumo to lower the um, room temperature, so I'm going to rephrase a certain quote from Mythbusters. I'm denying your definition and using my own. So, the way I understand escape velocity is, you can accumulate resources necessary to unlock content within the life service game faster than the content comes out. To account for fluctuations between different patches, it's not enough to be a little short of resources, because little by little this shortage will drain your assets, so having an obtainable surplus is a must. In other words, during your regular farming, you have to obtain more than you spent. Also, for clarity's sake, from this point both your lunacy and your extraction tickets are considered an untouchable hoard for either Walpurgisnacht or the Arknight Club, so we will try our best to solve this problem without spending it. Let's start solving this problem from the point I personally have found interesting. LCB regular checkup event with these prizes followed up by a rerun of everyone's favorite individual who may or may not have spoken with Carmen. Unless you have harvested time into a spare timepiece while you were riding a warp train, you have two weeks between the two, like everyone else. Where do we begin? Ego shards? Threats? The event itself? Wrong! Because everything needs the one singular resource, Enkephalon. By utilizing technique we have developed by being terminally online, we can immediately convert any encephalin we have accumulated into encephalin modules. How many modules can we get? Um, one encephalin recharges every 6 minutes. This means we get 10 encephalin per hour, or if we assume no losses on our part, 240 encephalin per day. With 20 of it needed to make a single module, we have found a hard limit. 12 modules per day. After two weeks, this becomes 168. Plus rewards from the event, and now we have 202. It looks sizable, but just you wait. How do we spend these modules? First, we would have to complete our daily and weekly battle pass missions. That's five modules per day down the drain. Also, the event itself will consume an equivalent of 9 modules, just so you would beat it. Last but not least, your weekly mirror dungeons. I'll count only the hard part with the bonus, and that's another 36 modules out of the equation. How much did we get from that? 204 crates and 140 thread. How much do we need to get everything we desire? 400 crates on average. How much do we need to also up tie and thread spin everything to tier 4? Let's go with a lot! While I'm trying not to panic, you should ask meaningful questions. For example, we still have these modules here, what if we burn them all in the mirror dungeons as well? At least this will farm off the event and ease our burdens, right? And sure, let's add thread and crates and the random crates being useful for one fourth of our sinners, we'll count them as one fourth of the crates we understand, and the rest we can put into threat. As for the mirror dungeons themselves, we're short. We have done everything in our power, and yet the might of one three-star identity, one two-star identity for a price, and one he ego drags us off the orbit back to the earth. Escape velocity doesn't exist, QED. Most Limbus players at this point would say, just put Lunacy into Uncaffle and get more modules, more dungeon clears, more crates, from crates you can still obtain threat, you'll be fine! 
But in all my honesty, in every single bit of it, I cannot in clear conscience advise you to do that because at the end of the day, you are still spending your lunacy. And if you are spending lunacy here, why not spend it somewhere else? Why not try to tickle the gacha? For the low price of 130 lunacy, you have a whole 2.1% chance to conserve 200 crates. This will be huge. All you have to do is to get your luck to correlate with your skill. For the same amount of lunacy, you would get only about this amount of crates from your dungeons, which is still more of a progress percentage choice. But do you really want to be boring? Ugh. Now I feel like I have committed financial fraud and shield NFTs at the same time, so I do want to remind that this video is sponsored by nothing but my volatile emotional state. Get me mad enough and I'll tell you about mixed integer programming I have done for this video but managed to get my point across without. Also, crippling FUMO addiction. Finally, you can ask the question of why should you even care? After all, LCB regular checkup is one of a kind event when it comes to content to get, rerun of yielding flesh to claim bones demands way less, and usually Limbus experiences droughts of any kind of content anyway. Time is not of the essence. No wonder the pallid whale of gacha gaming isn't enthusiastic to try it out, there are barely enough water to swim in! Jokes and my radical opinions aside, my intuition tells me our El Director have realized just how much money he needs to reach his impossible dream. To his credit, El Director does think that the only way of making money with Gacha is releasing more content, but to release more content with minimal effort, you release the same amount of content with less time in between, and this is exactly what the recent event rush felt like. Kanto 8 will come out before the Waiters Healing Ego video and will introduce another Healing Ego causing said video to be delayed even more. And then, after said Impossible Dream gets funded, we'll get a no warning Walpurgisnacht with all two stars featuring Hook Ryoshu, Hook Merceau and Full Stop Sinclair. I've already made one successful prediction and then another one, so let's give this up.